and then we'll do Belmont preview after. You can go back tomorrow, man. You are watching another episode of Hawks Nest here today. My name is Owen Crano. I'm joined today by Margaret Pugh Jr. and Justin Trevelyan. And we got a lot to talk about today. Men's and women's basketball is in the thick of it right now. We're going down the stretch in the OVC, and softball's about to start up this weekend. So, Marvin, I mean, you look back at Monday's game, and Philip Russell had 35 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 steals. And that stat line has only been put up by a D1 freshman one other time, and that was Ben Simmons at LSU in 2015. What does that say about the kind of player that Philip Russell is? I mean, to me, he's a, he's a great player, you know. He didn't play against in SI, in CMO's first game against SIUE early in the season, and coming back, he struggled against EIU and UT Martin, you know. But like you said, he had a spectacular game against um, Monday um, against SIUE um, on Monday night, you know. He he was just three points shy of CMO's single game scoring record, you know, and that just says like he's just a great player. Like he brings a different type of energy to CMO's mm -hmm. team that I thought was missing, you know. Yeah, and that game Monday night put him at six and five. But the game last night against mm -hmm. Austin P, they ended up losing, and that's the kind of game you look at. Austin P is now only four and eight in the mm -hmm. OVC standings. But Justin, that puts CMO at six and six, mm -hmm. and I mean. They're in the fourth spot. Do you feel like that's a good position for them? I definitely feel like that's a great position. You know, in the preseason rankings, they were picked to finish fourth in the OVC. And being there right now, I think, is great. It's an improvement based off years past of CMO men's basketball, obviously. But, you know, I kind of look for them to stay in that fourth spot into the OVC tournament. Yeah, and then um, kicking it over to women's basketball, I mean, mm -hmm. it's really just been a struggle for them all year. I mean, when you look at it, they're only 1-12 in, in the OVC, mm -hmm. and I mean, they've just really struggled, and that could be attributed to a lot of the young talent they have, and they're going up against a lot of seasoned mm -hmm. uh, veterans on these other teams, and it's really showed. But, Marvin, what did you see in last night's game against Austin P that was their downfall? I think it was... It was just one of those games you just got to accept it for what it is. You have to you take your loss, look forward to in this game, and, and improve on what, what can be fixed. You know, they were had a season low in points, field goal percentage, free throw percentage, rebounds, and assists, you know. So it was just one of those games you just – that you just got outplayed you, you, and you really beat yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and for – each of these teams, I mean, you got a tough battle tomorrow. I mean, you face mm -hmm. Belmont. Then again, you are at home, but, I mean, Belmont's a tough team. I mean, they're first in the women's standings, and they're currently second in the men's standings. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, I mean, you got a really tough opponent coming come Saturday. So you got to be able to rebound off that loss Saturday night mm -hmm. or Thursday night going into Saturday. Mm -hmm. But what do you think each one of these teams has to do to win? And, Justin, first, I'll start with you. Well, you know – in order to beat Belmont, you're going to have to just shoot unbelievably well. You're going to have to step up every aspect of your defense and just try to out-rebound. You basically have to have the game of your life if you're SEMO, women and men, to beat this Belmont team because that's, it's just a very scary team in the OVC. Marvin, what do you think needs to be done? I think, they, I think for the men and women, they just have to shoot the ball more efficiently, you know, and put the ball in the basket more. You know, Belmont, for the men, they're coming off a seven-game win streak. They're on a seven-game win streak. And the women's, they're on a five-game win streak, you know. But I think CMO can compete with them. Yeah, and now we'll take a look at softball. Mm -hmm. Preseason ranked first. I mean, they won the Ohio Valley Conference regular season champions two times in a row now. Mm -hmm. So with this win, that would put them in third. Justin, what, is, what do you kind of see coming out of this season? Well, you know, going into this season, I would see the Red Hawks softball team to either finish first or second in the OVC. I mean, you don't lose a lot of players. I mean, you lose Ashley Ellis to graduation. You lose a couple others here and there. But Ashley Ellis returns as an assistant coach. So, I mean, if anybody can coach how to hit the long ball, it's going to be her. So I think, you know, they're, they're going to score a lot of runs and they're going to win a lot of games. And they have some tough competition to start off going against some Power 5 schools. But playing schools like that is going to prepare you for OVC opponents later on in the season. Yeah, I mean, this team has a lot of young talent. And you mentioned loss of power. Obviously, mm -hmm. Ashley Ellis isn't playing, but you mentioned that she's going to be back as mm -hmm. a coach. And then you lose Katie Dryling, who was your DH for most of the year, mm -hmm. and she transferred to UT Martin. So really, when you look at it, I mean, you kind of lose that power aspect of the game. But last mm -hmm. year, this team, I mean, yes, they hit the long ball, and they hit it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, I mean, 
this is really a gap-to-gap -gap team. They're going to hit the ball where it's pitch, and they're going to find those gaps, and they're going to beat you that way. And also another thing that you can really look at is, I mean, this pitching staff. Rachel Rook wins the OBC Pitcher of the Year for only the second time in SEMO history. And, I mean, she's just a lights-out pitcher. Returning here for her fifth year, I mean, she's got the experience. Mm -hmm. And you kind of look at it as a, okay, well, a lot of these teams have faced her, and they faced her a lot. But mm -hmm. when you look at it, I mean, she's just dominant out there mm -hmm. on the mound. She's definitely a very dominant pitcher. I remember writing countless articles about her and her softball career throughout, throughout writing here at SEMO. So. Yeah, and this has been another episode of Hawks Nest. Join us again next week. I shouldn't have said it.